So we're in the midst of talking about decomposition problems that have no solutions. And so far we have already considered a number of examples with all different kinds of vectors. And in each case we were able to determine that decomposition is not possible by noticing a very special property that the decomposition vectors share and that the target vector does not satisfy. And on the basis of that we were able to conclude that the target vector cannot be represented by a linear combination of the decomposition vectors. So of course the question is just how special does that common property need to be in order for these kinds of arguments to be valid? And the answer is it has to be a linear property. Now if you review our earlier videos you will notice that we have already described what makes a property linear without actually introducing the term linear property. So the purpose of this video is simply to call greater attention to it. And here's how we're going to go about it. I will present you with three decomposition problems in which I will falsely try to argue that decomposition is impossible. But I will base my argument on properties that are not linear. So my conclusions will be invalid. As a matter of fact, all three of these decomposition problems have perfectly well-defined solution. So what we will try to do is to find the flaw in my argument and that will lead us to the realization of what kinds of properties lead to valid arguments. In other words, it will lead us to the definition of linear properties. Well, here we go. Here is my attempt number one at convincing you that this first decomposition problem is not possible. Well, notice that all of the vectors on the right hand side, the decomposition vectors, have ones as their first entries. Yet the target vector has a 3 here, not 1. And because the target vector does not satisfy the same property that these decomposition vectors share, this decomposition problem is impossible. Now is that a valid argument? It's not. Why is it not a valid argument? Well, that's because we actually skipped the heart of the argument. Do you remember the heart of the argument? We would point out a property that the decomposition vectors share and then argue that a sum of two vectors like that also has the same property. And that any vector that has that property multiplied by a number also has that property. And therefore, all linear combinations of vectors like that will have the same property. And if the target vector doesn't have that property, then decomposition is impossible. Well here, it's not that kind of property. Because if we take two vectors that have ones as their first entries and add them together, that breaks that property. That ends up, that leads to a vector whose first entry is two. So this property is not preserved by addition. It's also not preserved by multiplication by a number. Take any one of these vectors, multiply them by 10, and the result is a vector whose first entry is 10, not 1. So this property, while it's true, and it is shared by all the decomposition vectors, is actually completely irrelevant. Because in order for the property to be relevant, we have to be able to say that any linear combination of these vectors will have the same property. So that we can make the next step and build the logical bridge to the conclusion that since the target vector does not have that property, it cannot be represented by a linear combination of the decomposition vectors because all linear combinations of decomposition vectors must have that special property. So having one as your first entry is not one of those kinds of properties. So it's not a linear property. It is not preserved under linear combinations. It does not survive linear combinations. So a property is linear if it is preserved under linear combinations. In other words, a property is linear if two vectors satisfy that property, then any linear combination of, that property, of those two vectors also satisfy the property. Let me say it one more time. A property is linear if it's such that if any two vectors satisfy that property, any linear combination of those vectors 
also satisfies that same property. Now you can break up this requirement into two and you can say the sum of those two vectors must satisfy this property and the product of any one of those vectors with a number also satisfies that property. But the beauty of having the term linear combination is that you can actually combine those two properties into one and say that a property is linear if it is preserved under linear combinations or if it survives linear combinations. And having one as your first entry is not a linear property and therefore it does not lead to a valid argument of impossibility. And as I mentioned before, this decomposition problem is quite possible and has a well-defined solution. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. And at this point, I think you would not make this kind of mistake again. But if you haven't heard the spiel with regard to the first example, you might be tempted to say that all these vectors share the property that the second entry is one greater than the first. Second entry is one greater than the first. Second entry is one greater than the first. And oh my goodness, the vector on the left does not have the property, actually also has that property. So I have to add a one to make it a false argument. And the argument would be with the 41 here, that now the vector on the left does not have the property that the second entry is one greater than the first and therefore decomposition is not possible. So once again, this argument has the same flaw. The property that the second entry is one greater than the first does not survive linear combinations. Therefore, we're not able to build the logical bridge to the impossibility of decomposition. That makes this property irrelevant. It doesn't count, it's not helpful. This property is true, it is true, that it is shared by the three decomposition vectors, but it's not relevant. It's neither here nor there. So this second example was not much different from the first, but nevertheless, it was a little bit different. Now let's move on to the third one, and I'll attempt to make an absolutely ludicrous argument for why this decomposition may not be possible. I might say that this decomposition is not possible because all of the entries in the vectors on the right-hand side are even. And two of the entries here are not even, therefore decomposition is impossible. Well, it's clear that being even is completely irrelevant in <laughs> linear algebra. Why? Because we can multiply by fractions. Take any one of these numbers, multiply by one half, and here we have one, two, three. Two odd numbers. So being even or even being integer or anything like that does not survive linear combinations or even multiplication by numbers. So it's once again a completely irrelevant property. So to repeat, the property needs to be linear. In other words, it has to be the kind of property that survives linear combinations. And that would enable us to build the logical bridge from the decomposition vector sharing that property and the target vector not satisfying that property to the impossibility of decomposition. Now I would like to wrap up this video by mentioning that linear property is actually synonymous with the noun subspace because vectors that satisfy some linear property by the very definition of subspaces form a subspace. What is a subspace? A subspace is a subset of a vector space that is a vector space in its own right. In other words, two vectors from that subspace can be added together and the result is once again a vector in the subspace. Same with multiplication by numbers. In other words, a subspace is a subset of a, of a vector space that's closed under linear combinations. That's the term we used before, closed under linear combinations. We have closure, if you want to use a noun, under linear combinations. Well, if you consider a linear property and you say, let's group together all the vectors that have this linear property, then that group of vectors, that subset of the vector space will actually form a subspace. Why? By the very definition of what it means to be a linear property. You take any two of those vectors, add them together. The result once again has that property and it's therefore back in the subspace. Same with multiplication by numbers and you can unite the two halves of the property by saying 
closed under linear combinations. So that's just something very simple to keep in mind and to realize that we actually didn't introduce an entirely new concept. We can define a linear property as being the kind of property that extracts a subspace from a vector space. So use whatever synonym you prefer. So in the next video, we'll actually be able to characterize to a very reasonable extent uh, what all the linear properties look like. So that will be very interesting. So right now it may seem like a little bit of a free-for-all. There's all kinds of properties. Some are magically linear and you have to think about and determine whether or not they're linear. Some are not linear and it's just a new kind of problem each time you're faced with a property. You have to decide whether it's linear or not. Well, in the next video, we'll realize that all the linear properties look pretty much the same.